Welcome to Learn Elementor with me, JP, and we are looking at JIT elements from Crocoblox. And you can follow the link in the description below if you like to know more about them. We look at the button widget that comes with JIT elements. And you may ask, why on earth would I want to use another button element if there's already a button element included in the free version? And the reason is because this one has a little bit much more. Simply click and drag the button element from the menu where the jet elements are in the inspector and it will bring it in immediately. And notice how different this button works than the free version. To give you a quick overview, basically what the button allows you to do is to bring in an icon, but you can place it to the left, to the right, at the top and at the bottom, no icon and only icon. And what you would have observed there as well is that you have hover animation for the color in the back, which I kind of like. If you have a look at these buttons here, it has this gradient. It can slide in and it can also come in with an angle. And then the last one to point out probably is the ability to apply a gradient of colors to the button. Let's see how that is done in Elementor. With our button selected, you will notice here in the inspector on the left that you have the ability to bring in an icon. So let's do that. We'll bring in a little bell over there. And then you can also choose a different icon for the hover. So let's put in a check mark. Bell, icon, bell, check mark, bell. Your text here can also be changed according to whether you are in the normal default state or the hover state. So let's say this one is ring me. And this one is success. Over here is the link. And then under settings, you're going to have the opportunity to add that effect as it transitions from the default to the hover state with a variety of transitions. It really gives it just that little bit of flair and interesting interaction. I always mention this, that remember when it comes to these kind of interactions, they're only really effective on the desktop, on a tablet and a mobile, kind of lost. Here you can deactivate the icon, interesting place. I always think it's best to group things together. If you have use icon, yes or no here, you should rather put it up here where you can add the icon. And then with the icon activated, you have the control here over the position, put it to the top. And I really like this function where you can put it to the top. And then under styling, we'll also have the ability to add padding and space between the icon and the text in the button. So let's leave it at the bottom, go to style. And here we will have all that power over giving our button a little bit more structure and spacing and making it look better. Let's activate custom size because this will give me my custom width. And by putting it on percentage and then adding 100, you'll get a full display in the container it is nested within. I really enjoy this kind of button. It's just one of my favorite ways of working with a button. But if you are happy with an automatic setting of the width of the button and height, you just leave this toggled off. I'm going to leave it on. Let's put it on 200 in this case. And it's essentially just applying padding. So if I put 100 at the top and 200, that's pretty big. But at least we can see what's going on there. Your content alignment to the right. And that is really nifty because you have a lot of button elements on the market that will move the button to the left center and to the right but the text always just remains in the middle the fact that i can put the content to the left or to the right really appreciate this little feature and then here alignment will give you the positioning of the entire button container itself let's put that to the center your normal margins, and then you also have your background colors that you can apply over here. You will notice background type, border type here. Don't be confused by this one. This is not going to affect the background blue that you are currently seeing. For that, you go to the next panel, which is plain. And here, go to background type. Let's activate the gradient. Let's bring in another color here. And this is where you will set the gradient. 
If you do it under general, it's actually affecting the background, which is very confusing. I'm not even entirely sure why that is added. It could be for some visual effect if you have a little bit of a transparency applied to it. But remember, if you want the color set or the gradient set, you do it under plain. Again, you have control over padding. You can set your locations here if you want a very hard transition, like so. We're going to leave it on a nice little gradient and you can also apply the radial and then set the position as well. Your angle over here, and I usually like something around here at 270, and then border as well as border radius, and you have your box shadow, all those little goodies that you need. And remember, the best part of this is that you can go to hover, and then from hover, you can also apply a different gradient to the one that you have here. So if I put it there on yellow, and I hover, nice. With that little transition, this is a really funky looking button. Let's have a look at icon, the normal stuff here. You change the size of the icon. You have icon box width and icon box height that will apply some of that spacing that you're going to need between your text and your icon. That's going to apply some of it. If we go to margin, delink it, and go to the top margin, and we increase that, you will see that's where I will add more space between that. Let's put the margin to something a little bit more manageable, and that's at 15. Of course, in this case, I think we would add a little bit more padding there. Finally, we have our label. You have text alignment here for the label, depending also on your content alignment and then you can change the color and topography of your text. Because we have this function here under general for the custom height, I would add my padding like so. Let's say I have this very big button that I want to use. And now you can see with that more space added, the space between my label and the icon has also increased. To reduce that, go back to icon. And now here with the icon box height, I will reduce it where I had set it previously. And now it looks a little bit better. All of them are interconnected, so you have to jump around a little bit between them. I love this button. Whenever I need to bring in a button on my page and I have my jet elements nearby, I do it with this button. I just love the gradient and this little bit of interaction and different background when people do click on the button. From me, JP, stay safe and go well.